Before we get into the video with actual measurements being taken, I've got a couple of still photos here for you to see. This allows you to get a look at the construction of the motor, including the switch and circuits. What you're looking at right now is just the top view of it. This second photo is a close-up view of a circuit board that I made for the unit. And I actually used surface mount bridge rectifiers on it. These ones in particular only had one volt insertion loss on them. Most bridge rectifiers, it's normally about 1.2 volts insertion loss, so that wasn't too bad. Also, this allowed me to have a way to interface my top and bottom coils together. And if you're looking at this, you can see it's got a bullseye in the center. The outer ring is the negative output, the center ring is the positive output, and this is where I planned on extracting power from it. The third photo is a picture of the control circuit. I used the same design that Romero UK put in the PDF file that he made available for everybody to download. It's nothing more than a PNP transistor. It's being switched on and off with a Hall Effect sensor. Now on mine, I got my Hall Effect sensor on a little arm that could swing back and forth above the platter. This gave me total tuning ability, so in other words, I was able to find the absolute sweet spot on this motor for the maximum RPM and the minimum amount of current draw. One more thing worth mentioning, there's actually two of these controller boards on this unit since there's two pairs of motors. Alright, this is the last photo before we get into the video with the actual measurements being taken. If you look closely, you're going to notice there's a bunch of little circuit boards that are circling at the bottom of this board, and the coils interface to that, and here's why. I did not want to use the coil wires themselves to interface to the top circuit board. If something happened and a wire got jerked out of a coil, that would mean I'd have to disassemble this whole thing to rerun wires from a coil. I played it safe and I tied it to circuit boards, and then I used the circuit boards to interface to the top circuit board with insulated wires. That was my reasoning behind that. Alright, let's get down to business and let's look at this video. We're going to monitor the output voltage of this unit with the meter that's on the left hand side and we've got a current meter on the right hand side that's going to monitor current draw on this motor while it's running. Keep an eye on it when I put this thing under load too. I'm also going to make RPM measurements so you'll see the RPMs of this unit spinning up. i got to make it official. My hat is now officially in the ring for the Muller motor. Before I crank this thing up, I'm going to move the rotor by hand so that you can see the cogging effect that the magnets on the rotor have with the ferrite cores on the coils. If you notice, I'm not putting a lot of effort into spinning this thing, and it does spin pretty freely. The helper magnets do smooth out the cogging on this. We'll discuss this as the video moves forward. Something pretty neat worth mentioning. If you've noticed, when people build this up, every time they turn the power on, the thing sits there and ticks back and forth like a clock until they take their finger and spin it up. Notice how the current continues to drop as the motor picks up RPMs. I fabricated my own bearings out of nylon screws for this motor so that I would have adjustment control over it. I did this because I wanted to be able to adjust this motor. I wanted to be able to adjust the rotor's distance between the coils and do it on the fly. And to be able to do that, I needed to be able to adjust the length, technically, of the shaft that's on the motor. So if I needed to spread the coils away from the rotor, I could take the screws and screw them in as I spread the platters out. So basically what I'm telling you is, I've got a lot of control over this motor, over a lot of aspects of it. So I tried to put a lot of thought into this when I was putting it together originally. Before I forget, the motor is being fed with a 14 volt DC input. Let's take some RPM measurements of this motor. Something I do want to mention, and that is I'm going to be comparing the RPM measurements of this motor to Romero UK's original video that he's got up there. We'll cover that a little bit later in the video. As you can see, we're hitting about 1900 RPMs plus some change on the meter. The next thing we're going to do is take some voltage measurements on the actual output of the motor. Once again, we're running the motor on a 14 volt DC input. It's between 56 and 57 volts. I'm going to turn the light on the meter just so I know that you can see it.
The next thing we're going to do is put a load on the output of this motor. I'm going to be tapping this light in and out on it since it's such a high voltage I don't want to burn the light out. But I want you to pay attention to two things. The sound of the motor when I'm hooking a load to it and also the current draw on the meter that's feeding the motor. Alright, did everybody notice that every time I tap that load in and out on the motor that it not only bogged the motor down but the current draw feeding the motor went up? That's Lens Law in action for you. In other words, whenever you start taking power off of it, you're going to create another magnetic field on the coil that opposes the rotor magnets, which acts like a set of electric brakes. This brings me to my next point, and that is Romero made the claim that not only was he able to make a closed loop running system, that he was also able to get another 10 to 12 watts to boot to feed an external load on his motor. And when I noticed him hooking stuff up to it, I noticed that, hey, it didn't drag down, it didn't bog down or anything. Remember we talked about the RPM measurements? I'm a musician by trade, so I hear notes. When I hear the motor spinning, I can hear that as a note. I actually took his video and downloaded it, and I took the motor, listened to it really close, and then I matched my motor up to match his speed up, did it with the variable power supply, and he's spinning around 1200 to 1300 RPMs. Now he's only got 300 turns per coil, 600 per pair. At that low of RPM, I doubt he's going to reach that target voltage, much less over the power supply voltage like he was claiming. Something I want to say right now, I said this in the beginning of this video, I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not going to say the man didn't do it. Maybe he has done it. Maybe everybody else is overlooking something that he's done that probably wasn't in that PDF file. Then again, maybe it's a hoax. I am going to say this. I want everybody out there to come to their own conclusions on the video that Romaro UK uploaded to YouTube and the claims that he makes in it. So for whatever it's worth, this is my data that I'm putting out there and that's where I'm going to leave it unless I discover otherwise. I've got the helper magnets on my motor just like he had on his. I've got more control over my motor than he did his. I can actually tune my helper magnets in and out because I drilled the slots where they would slide in and out. I could also add magnets to it. As a matter of fact, I did. I added enough magnets to where I was able to cancel out the rotors so there was barely any power coming out of it. So I don't know what Romero did. So this message goes out to Romero if he's listening to this video. All I can say is if you really did this, if you honestly made this thing work, and if you really do feel that you were threatened by the authorities over this motor to the point of disassembling it, let me make a suggestion. Put it back together, get it all working, get all the details to it, package it up, give it to a third person that you trust with your life, have them send it to Stefan at overunity.com with explicit instructions on how to test it. Let Stefan receive it. If it works, maybe we can figure this out and get this thing working like you have in that video. And unless you're willing to do that, i got to look at you and say that you're hoaxing everybody. So I'm not trying to be mean here, I'm just laying it out like it is. Now the original molar motor, there is something to it people, I'm going to tell you right now. Just within a couple of weeks ago, the daughter of the man that designed it, that's now deceased, she's got somebody else working on it, and I'm going to tell you, I was beyond impressed with what i seen. This damn thing is as big as a truck tire, an 18-wheeler truck tire. They were spinning it at 100 RPMs on 24 volts, if I was seeing it right, and they actually got out of it enough power to light up a 100-watt light bulb. I do have some information on the Muller motor. I'm going to be putting that together into a, something, a plain video that hopefully everybody will be able to follow. You can try it the way he did it originally. That's my plan, okay? My plan is to go ahead and rebuild this thing, but I'm going to build it on the original premise. Now, um, Romero UK did follow a couple guidelines. The offset with the coils and magnets, yeah, he was right on that. He did a different a number of coils and magnets, but he did follow that guidelines. To take the power off of it, it's done slightly different. So once I gather all my eggs into one basket, before I build this up, I'm going to go ahead and make another YouTube video, and I'm going to explain it to the best of my ability what I think that they did on the original motor. Before I end this video out, I do want to mention a couple of YouTube users by their usernames. And the reason I'm doing this, i got to tell you guys, you do some impeccable work. That's the only way I can put it. This goes out to Zero Fossil Fuels, Whoopi Jump, and I'm hoping I'm not butchering these other names, Tyrannorod and Clansers. I'm talking about people that pay attention to details. Your prototypes look like they're ready for production. That's all i got to say. I'm going to come back to Whoopi Jump here for a second. One of the reasons that I had mentioned him 
was I was looking at his prototype and he was extremely close to Romaro UK's video. I got to looking at it and he paid attention to detail. He had nice high RPMs. I think he was pushing two, three thousand RPMs. His motor sounded sweet. You could see that he had all the nylon and the washers and the helper magnets, everything, including the kitchen sink, a side order of fries. You know, when I looked at that, I noticed that when he did his test that our tests pretty much mirrored each other as far as what the outcome was. Now, has he come up with some new findings? I don't know. I will be checking on everybody, though. And, of course, last but least, Zero Fossil Fuels made a statement that I totally agree with. This world's in a mess right now. Recently, we had all of that oil that was spilled into the ocean thanks to BP and their negligence. We had the crisis over in Japan when they were hit with the earthquake and all of the reactors were breached. Russia, they've also had accidents with nuclear power. So has the USA. This is my point. If we don't turn things around pretty quick, we're going to find ourselves living back in the damn Stone Age. I am going to say this before I cut this video off. If you are somebody out there that is sitting on a working device, and you know you got something that's valid that could change the way the world gets its power now. Now is the time you need to be cutting loose with it and putting it out there. What we don't need is more Bill Gates or Rockefellers. What we do need is something that the everyday person can afford or either put together themselves. I would like to hear your feedback on the video as to whether you agree or disagree with the data that I put out there. You can leave me something up on the blog, shoot me an email, carry your pigeon, Psychic message, I don't know if I can receive it, but I'll try. Do not put a message to a rock and throw it through my window. If you do that, I have to come get you. On that note, Flash 001 USA. Peace out, everybody.